Hey guys, I'm Stable Abe. This is Larry. We're Bella Lost Souls, and we're here to show you Star Wars Legion how to play it. You ready, Larry? <laughs> so, to get started, Star Wars Legion is broken down into game rounds, and each game round has three phases. You've got the command phase, in which players choose which units are going to activate first and issue commands. You've got the activation phase in which players alternate turns activating units and then you've also got the end phase which is kind of a cleanup phase you finish off what's going on so it's got a little battle set up here and we're going to go through how normal actions work uh, first off let's talk a little bit about cards and the anatomy of a card in star wars legion so as you can see here we've got our rebel troopers card and that's kind of the basic breakdown of a card now rebel troopers card is going to have a number of different things in the card up at the very top you're going to have top left is going to have your faction symbol. That's going to be the Rebel Alliance in this case. Going over, you'll have the name of the unit. That's Rebel Troopers. And then going over on the top right, uh, you'll have the rank of the unit. In this case, it's going to be a core unit and the number of models in your unit. In this case, four. Coming down back to the left and going down on the left side, you'll have first off the point value of the unit. That's going to be the basic point value of the unit without any upgrades. And then you'll have the various upgrade types the unit can take. Each one of these icons corresponds with a separate upgrade type, such as Trooper or Heavy Weapon Trooper. Uh, and you can take one upgrade card per upgrade item. In the center of the unit, you're going to have any special rules that the unit has, in this case Nimble, and a description of how it works. Then going over on the far right, you're going to have the defense dice or armor dice that they roll as well as the number of wounds and the morale of the unit. Coming down, you'll have the offense and defensive surge slot. Not all units have either of these. The top slot, which in this case is grayed out for the Rebel Troopers, shows what they convert offensive surges to. The bottom slot is what they convert defensive surges to. Below that, you're gonna have the movement value of the unit, their speed. It's gonna be one, two, or three. Finally, at the bottom of your cards, you're gonna have their weapons. Most units have two weapons. Some of them are a close combat weapon, their melee weapon. That's going to be donated by the red symbol. And then it's going to have the dice that they roll in attacks. On the other side, this unit in this case has a ranged weapon, the A280 blaster rifle. You're going to have the range of the weapon, in this case, one to three, and then the dice that's rolled. Now those dice are per model in the unit. We've also got our upgrade cards here. So in this case, they've been upgraded with an MPL 57 Ion Trooper. You can see that their upgrade icon on that card, that's gonna be on the bottom left, corresponds with one of the upgrade markers on the Rebel Troopers card. This card gives the unit an additional weapon that th that trooper alone can use. And you can see that's gonna have its stats with its range and the dice it rolls up at the top. And then beneath that, it's gonna have any special rules that that unit gives the Rebel Trooper unit. The bottom right corner is gonna have the point value of that card. And then over here, we've also got an icon showing that you have to exhaust this card to use it. Uh, additional cards might be something like targeting scopes. In this case, it's not an upgrade model. It doesn't add an additional model to the unit, but it does give us the unit another special rule. That's basically how cards work in Star Wars Legion. Let's talk about some of the tokens you're gonna use over the course of your game. The two most common tokens you're gonna find are going to be the dodge token and the aim token. These tokens are acquired by taking either the dodge or aim action during your turn. The dodge token allows you to spend it to cancel one enemy hit during a defensive action. The aim token you can spend during an attack to reroll two dice. There are some cards and rules such as precise that's going to modify the number of dice that you can reroll or cancel using those tokens. Over here we've got your standard wound token. There's both a one wound token and a three wound token that you'll see. You'll use those to mark the number of wounds your larger units, such as the ATRT, have taken over the course of the game. This is going to be your suppression token and your panic token. Suppression token is going to note how suppressed you are during the course of a game. When a unit is suppressed, it has a couple of effects. At the beginning of its turn, it's going to have to make a rally check. For the rally check, it rolls one white defense dice per suppression token. On a blank result, the suppression token remains. On any other result, that's going to be the block or surge result, you take off one suppression token. 
A unit that has any suppression tokens on it has two main effects. It gains one level of cover, up to the maximum of two, and it loses one of its actions during the turn. If a unit finishes its rally step with twice as many suppression tokens or more than its courage value, it becomes panicked. It's going to get this token here. A panic unit can only take a move action, a single move action, do nothing else, and it must move towards the nearest table edge. If it runs off the table edge, it's destroyed. Here we've got a vehicle damage tokens. When a vehicle becomes damaged, it can suffer a permanent effect. You can have the damage token here. That's your basic one. Uh, if it's damaged, when it activates, you roll that white defense dice again. And if you get a blank result, you can only you lose one of your actions during the turn. You get a disabled token here. If the unit is disabled, it cannot reverse, and anytime it moves, it has to take two actions to move. And you can also have a weapon destroyed token here. That's a pretty obvious effect. If you have a weapon destroyed token, one of your weapons is destroyed and can no longer be used. Another token that you'll find with vehicles a lot is going to be the ion token there. Ion tokens can be gained from a variety of effects, but mostly from being shot by something like an MPL ion trooper. For every ion token a vehicle has, it loses one action. This can prevent a vehicle from acting at all. However, at the end of its action, it does clear all of its ion tokens. But lastly, we've got the standby token here. A standby token can be granted by taking the standby action. When you have a standby token, you can choose to use it after an enemy unit at range 1 to 2 performs an action. You can spend that token to either move with your unit or shoot. Uh, however, if your unit that has a standby token ever becomes suppressed, performs a move, attack, or any other action, it discards a standby token. Each player has a hand of seven command cards. Each command card is going to have a top, at the top left is going to have a pip value. It's going to be one to four. All players are going to have two one pip cards, two two pip cards, two three pip cards, and then the generic four pip standing orders card. Uh, during the command phase, players are going to select one of their command cards to use. A command card, aside from those pips, is going to have its name, a picture that shows what's going on, how many units it activates. This can be just generic units, like one unit. Sometimes it will be specific units, such as Darth Vader or trooper units. And then beneath that, it will have any special rules that that card may have. So each player is going to pick a command card secret and then play it. In the case of this battle, the rebel player is going to play the push card, while the imperial player is going to play the ambush card. Now, as we can see here, the ambush card has a one pip value, whereas the push card has a two pip value. That means that the imperial player with the one pip value has priority for this turn. Next, the players will issue order. In Star Wars Legion, each unit has a order token corresponding with its unit type. In this case, you can see that I have a support unit, a heavy support unit here, a support unit of an ATRT, so I have a support token for it. I have a core unit here, which gets a core unit, those are my rebel troopers. And then I also have Luke Skywalker, he's my commander, so he gets a commander token. All of those tokens together form my order pool. During the course of the activation phase, I can choose to either randomly draw an order from the order pool or activate a unit that has a face-up order next to it. The way you get face-up orders is by placing one during the command phase. So let's put that all together and see kind of how the flow of a turn might go. Going back to our example turn here, the Imperial player has played the ambush card and placed a face-up order token next to their stormtroopers. Or the rebel player has played the push card and placed a face-up order token next to the rebel troopers and to their ATRT. Because the Imperial player has priority, they're going to activate first. In this case, as you remember, they were going to activate their Stormtroopers. So normally, Stormtroopers move a distance of two. So the Imperial player is going to take the two movement, two distance movement template and place it next to the squad leader. That's going to be the guy with the pauldron there. And he can place that anywhere along the model's movement or base and move his models to the end of it. The one caveat to that is that if the model goes through difficult terrain, such as crossing that barricade there, it's going to reduce its movement by one, in this case, down to a movement speed of one. Models can only reduce their movement speed to a minimum of one. 
So he can place that template there anywhere next to the base of his model. If he wants to, he can pull up the barricade so he can put it down on the ground too. He'll replace the barricade afterwards. And then once he's happy with that, he's going to move the model. Now it can move to the very end of the template or stop anywhere along it. Once the commander model is moved, the leader model, he'll take the rest of the squad and place them within coherency of the leader. That coherency is that one movement template again. So anywhere within that one template, they don't have to be fully within, just partially within that template. He can place that unit down. So he's going to move forward and spread them out a little bit. Now when a unit activates in Star Wars Legion, they do get to make two actions. They can move, they can attack, they can aim, they can dodge, as well as some special actions such as recovery uh, and other special actions there. So normally you can only make one of any one type of action. However, the ex exception to that is that you can make two move actions. So the Stormtroopers are actually going to choose to make a double move. They want to get into a better position. This time, they're going to get to move movement speed of two because they're not going to move over any difficult terrain. So again, we're going to place that movement template there next to the unit, move the squad leader to the end, and then simply place the rest of the squad in coherency with him. All that matters in this case from the initial measuring is that the squad leader is moving. If the squad leader moves, the entire unit does count as moving. Once he's completed his second movement, the unit's activation is going to be over. He's going to turn his face-up token face down next to it to show that it's activated. Now we're going to show an example of vehicle movement in Star Wars Legion. So as you may remember, I went ahead as the Rebel player and I had pushed a command token next to my ATRT here. So I'm going to go ahead and activate it first. Now when vehicles move, it's fairly similar to infantry movement you just saw. Again, they're going to have a speed and they're going to get to move along this movement template here. The main difference between infantry and vehicles is that you'll notice that vehicle bases have a slot at the front and the back. When moving with vehicles, you must place the movement template in the front slot. Then, again, you can make that one degree turn and move it. A couple special vehicle movement options you do have is as a movement action, you can choose to rotate the vehicle 90 degrees or move backwards. In that case, you move at distance one and can place your vehicle movement token, your vehicle uh, movement template on the back of it. So in this case, in fact, I am going to want to back up. So I'm going to go ahead and reverse at one speed. Again, I can do that turn here. Move my vehicle over here. And then for a section action, I'm going to go ahead and move forward one, such as that. So that's one example of vehicle movement. What if, however, I didn't want to back up and instead wanted to try running over some enemy units? <laughs> Now, ground vehicles, such as an ATRT can displace enemy models in this game. So I could move forward. In that case, because I am moving over a obstacle here, I am going to slow my movement down to one. But I could move like this to get here. In this case, I would displace these two models, and the Imperial player would get to place them within distance one in coherency of his squad leader. Afterwards, the unit that I displaced would take a suppression token. I could then move again. This time, I'm not going to move my full distance. But instead, I'm going to advance just in front of his bikes here and stop. Having moved twice, my activation is done, and I'll place my face down token next to it. That's how vehicles move in Star Wars Legion. How you demonstrate a movement, let's show how an attack works. Now during a unit's turn, they can take a number of actions as mentioned. They can move, they can attack, they can dodge, they can aim, they can take the recover action, a standby action, or special actions on their cards. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and activate my unit of rebel troopers here. I'm going to take my first action and aim with them. That's going to get me an aim token, which I can use later. Next, I'm going to nominate the unit and then I'm going to declare the, attend the defender. That's the unit I'm targeting. This unit here is going to go ahead and fire at these stormtroopers out there. The units can split fire per weapon type. All models with the same weapon in a unit have to target the same unit. Because I do have two separate weapons, the regular blaster rifles in the squad, and then my ion trooper, I could target two models 
Instead, I'm gonna fire all my fire into that storm unit there. So next, I'm gonna go ahead and measure the range. Ranges are gonna be measured from my squad leader here to the enemy unit. Now, all my weapons have a range of one to three, and you can see I'm clearly within range of the enemy models. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and form my attack pool. So each one of my regular troopers using their A280 blaster rifle gets one black dice. That's gonna give me an attack pool of three black dice. I'm gonna go ahead and modify that by exhausting my MPL 57 Ion Trooper to fire his weapon. That's gonna give me two extra red dice. I could choose for him to use the squad's normal blaster rifle for an extra black dice, but in this case, I want the stronger attack. The next step in the attacking is going to be to roll these dice. In this case, we can see there's a couple different results in the dice. The dice can have a blank result, the dice can have a hit result, can have a surge result, which is this symbol here, or a critical result, which is this symbol here. In this case, I have scored two hits, one surge, and two blank results. Now, my rebel troopers don't have any offensive surges, so that surge isn't going to do any good right now. However, after I roll the dice, I can re-roll the dice with any abilities I have. In this case, I can send my aim token to re-roll two dice. And because I have the precise one rule from my targeting scopes, I can actually re-roll three dice. Now let's be re-rolling additional dice when I aim. So I'm going to take these three misses and re-roll them. That's going to go ahead and net me two crits. So I'm up from two hits to two hits and two crits. Next, if I had any attack surges that I could convert, I would convert them. In this case, I don't have any attack surges and I don't have any ability to convert them. So we'll skip that. The next step is going to go ahead and to apply dodge and cover. Now in this case, structures don't have any dodge tokens, so we can't use that. And they're not in cover from terrain. Even though this one model is, I have to draw a line of sight from my leader to the majority models of the enemy unit. If the majority of their models are in cover, they would get the benefits of cover, but they're not. These trees are too light to provide cover from me firing through them. But, the enemy unit was suppressed because I ran them over earlier. And suppression tokens, no matter how many you have, but if you have any suppression tokens, you do get one level of cover. Because your guys are taking cover and you know, ducking their heads under all the fire. So they are going to have level 1 cover, and for each level of cover, the defender can remove 1, can cancel one of my hit results. Can't cancel crit results though, but that is going to take care of one of most hits there. Next, I could modify attack dice if I had any other way of modifying my dice. Uh, this could be such as impact weapons that change hits into crits. I would use them then. After the attacker has modified the attack dice, the defender can modify attack dice. If they have some other way of canceling hits or changing hits into misses, they can do that. And then the defender is going to roll his defend defense dice. Now I've got three hits, so the defender is going to roll one dice for each hit that I've done. You'll find those dice in the card, and in the case of the Stormtrooper, they are going to be the red defense dice. So he's going to go ahead and roll the three of those. After he's rolled them, he can then re-roll any dice if he has any abilities that let him do that, modify them there. Then he can uh, convert defense surges. My rebel troopers have a defense surge conversion, but the Imperial Storm Troopers do not. They've just got a good defense dice. After that, again, he can modify, the defender can modify them if they have any other ability to modify the defense dice. Then the attacker can modify defense dice. And finally, we compare results. So, each successful defense roll there, block, cancels one of my hits or crits. In this case, he rolled two, and he's gonna go ahead and cancel two of my results, meaning that one hit goes through. In this case, it's gonna deal a single wound to him. He can choose one of his models to take that wound. It cannot be the sergeant if there's any option otherwise. And because these models only have one wound, it's going to remove the model. If you have a multi-wound model, they'll have a number of wounds that they can take before they're removed. They'll slowly accrue wounds until they're destroyed. Uh, you have to apply wounds to already wounded models, if at all possible. And that's going to be how you do an attack in Star Wars Legion. Alright guys, thanks for watching us. That was how you play Star Wars Legion. Larry, it's a great game. What do you think? Uh, uh.
Awesome. Thanks for watching and may the force be with you. Don't forget to subscribe. Support us on Patreon. Thanks for watching.